Let's start with my earliest 8 element Super Tacomar 50mm 1.4. In the following examples, this lens was critically focused here, and when I'm talking about the rendering of circles of confusion in the background, I'm looking mostly at these out of focus highlights here. At f1.4, my copy is a little bit soft and has some glow. In fact, I thought I'd missed focus when I first saw the images, but I did this test a few times and found those results to be consistent. Now, I only have a single copy of this lens, so it could be due to sample variation. There may be some internal haze, although I didn't see any. It could be some decentering of the elements themselves. Now, wide open, this lens shows strong illumination vignetting, and the circles of confusion in the background show a subtle highlight of uh, onion ringing, I guess I'm going to describe it as. Closing down the aperture to f2 decreases the falloff in the corners and the sharpness improves. At 2.8, the sharpness and illumination improve even more. Between f4 and 5.6, the sharpness and depth of field increase substantially. The vignetting more or less disappears, and the shape of the aperture blades start to create hexagonal patterns in the circles of confusion in the background, at f4 and 5.6 specifically. At f8, those shapes start to take on a little bit of softness. Now let's move ahead a little in the production and we'll look at a late 8 element Super Tacomar 50mm 1.4. Wide open, this later version is sharper than my early version. It too shows strong illumination vignetting and the circles of confusion in the background show a subtle ring of highlights again, although it's not as pronounced as the early version. Closing the lens down reduces vignetting and improves the sharpness. Between f4 and f8, both the early and late versions of the 8-element Super Tacomar perform very closely. I thought I had a decent 7-element Super Tacomar 50mm 1.4 to test against the earlier versions, the 8-element versions, but it seems I have a super multi-coated version. So optically it's the same, but this one has an open aperture pin that's designed to engage the light meter in the Spotmatic F and the ES series cameras. That pin binds on my adapter, which is why the framing on shot to shot seems to change. So due to this problem, I don't use the lens all that often. Now wide open, this lens is about as sharp as my late 8 element SuperTac. There's a similar amount of vignetting, and the glow and the circles of confusion are about the same as the earlier versions. Now there's a very strong warm cast, and it's due to the decay of the radioactive glass that the 7 element has. The yellowing does seem to reduce the transmission of light a touch, and there's a little less onion ring effect on the background highlights. As we've come to expect, closing the lens down a stop improves the vignetting and the sharpness. Stopping the lens down from f4 through f8, the sharpness, as we would expect, improves. The hexagons in the background don't seem quite as defined as they are in the 8 element versions, and they remain closer to round as the lens is stopped down. Now let's see the 8 elements side by side. As I'd mentioned, wide open, the early version of the 8 element is softer than the late version. I have no explanation as to why, but beyond that, they perform similar. When I'm using apertures smaller than f4, I found both versions to perform quite closely. Now let's look at the differences between a 7 and an 8 element version. Wide open, both of the lenses are quite similar, apart from the obvious warmth. The 8 element is much more neutral. The contrast might be a touch higher in the super multi-coated 7 element version, although it doesn't show clearly in these examples. Had I adjusted the white balance to compensate for the color differences, we may just see slightly deeper dark tones. At 5.6, the sharpness is very close. The 7 element circles of confusion in the background seem more rounded than they are in the 8 element version. There is a loss of light transmission that's evident in the brightness of the highlights, although that could be due to the variance in color transmission, and perhaps a white balance adjustment would change that. Let's move to some more budget-friendly lenses. We'll start with a Super Tacomar 55mm 1.8. The 55mm lens has a narrower angle of view, and from the same subject position will magnify the subject more. Because I wanted to keep the same perspective, I didn't move the camera to compensate. This does have an effect on depth of field. It's minimal, but it's there. At f1.8, the vignetting is quite a bit less than we had on the 50mm versions when we were using them at 1.4. It's closer to what they were giving at f2. Something to note is the color. It's a little bit warmer than the 8-element Super Tacomar 50mm 1.4, but it's nothing close to the color of the 7-element. 
As with the other lenses in this review, the sharpness is improved by closing the aperture. The blades leave hexagonal circles of confusion in the background, and to my eye they appear quite similar to the 8-element 50mm 1.4. The Super Multicoated Tacomar 55mm f1.8 was the budget lens that was available in later years. It features better coatings and should yield higher contrast and greater light transmission due to those improvements. The sharpness at the widest aperture is about the same as the earlier 55. I find there's a little more mid-tone contrast and perhaps a little deeper shadows. The lens does have a little less glow in the highlights, and I would imagine that comes from the improved reflection control and the better optical coatings. This lens is a touch warmer than the cooler 8-element 50mm. To my eye, closing the lens down shows the hexagonal pattern of the aperture in the background, but the edges of those shapes seem softer than some of the other lenses we've compared. Now let's have a look at all four versions. I'm not going to include the earliest 8-element 50mm because it's a little soft wide open. Now we have three warm lenses and one that's quite neutral. The 7-element 50mm being the warmest and the 8-element obviously the coolest. When it comes to sharpness, the 50mm lenses at 1.4 seem sharper than the 55s at 1.8, but it's close. The blur in the backgrounds of each of the lenses are surprisingly similar, with perhaps a little bit more smoothness with the 50mm versions. Not sure that the differences reflect the radical extremes in prices that the 8-element lenses command if we're looking purely at performance alone. If we consider the value of scarcity and historical significance, then yes, the 8-elements certainly have value. When we compare the performance of the lenses at 5.6, the sharpness and contrast improves across the board. Closing the aperture seems to close the gap in advantage that the multi-coatings provide. Now this isn't a worst case challenge, and I would expect very different results if the scene had more backlighting.